malaadun nas fi dinin wa dunya badulun duna manin bin nawali shuja'un fi ikhtiyadin wa ihtinamin ila al-islam ma tarkil muhali jawadun ikfa institute Al Madina Travel Salum Jida Sen Info International Actori Hatijania in America Si Njital Sunyu Imam Muhammad Muntaha Saho Nyolin Dimai Emission Bumak Bidi Sendine Mohammed Sali wa Salam Wabarik Ala Nabina Muhammad Amma Badu Alhamdulillah first and foremost I want to thank the Imam for the invitation. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here in the community to be present amongst my brothers and sisters. I don't get much time to travel to Staten Island. And honestly, the only time that I'm in this borough is when I'm visiting the Imam and visiting the Masjid. So it's a pleasure to see the community still here and the community is thriving and growing. I also want to make dua for all of the youth and the Shabab that are here. Uh, it is always a pleasure to see the Masjid fill with young people uh, to see that it's full of life and to see that the people are patient with the youth because if they do not have a good experience in the masjid then when they become older they're not going to want to be inside of the masjid so we have to remind ourselves to be extremely patient with them and to enjoy uh, their laughter and their playful nature but inshallah we are here tonight to try to raise money so that we can keep this masjid open to keep this place open, this facility open not just for you, but for the future and for the Shabab. And inshallah, we are looking by raising this money and being charitable tonight that we will be saving ourselves on the Day of Judgment. Because as Allah mentions in the Quran, that there is no good that any of us does except that we do it for our own benefit. At the end of the day, we may do something for the sake of Allah, but in reality, it benefits us to do it. And when we think about our relationship with money and with wealth, we have to understand our nature. First and foremost, we have this beautiful hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, or narrated about the Prophet, in which it states that once the angel Jibreel ﷺ was sitting with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and then the Prophet looked up in the sky and saw an angel coming down. Jibreel turned to the Prophet ﷺ and said, this angel has never come to the earth before since the day that he was created. And when the angel came down, he came to Muhammad ﷺ and said that, your Lord has sent me to give you an offer to make you Malikan Nabiyan a king and a prophet, or Abdan Rasulan, a servant and a messenger. So choose, and whatever you choose, you will become. So this was the choice in front of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we must ask ourselves, what would we have chosen if we were sitting in his place? Would you choose to be a king or a queen and a prophet, or would you choose to be a servant and a messenger? The truth is, that the overwhelming majority of us, if not all of us, would choose to be a king and a prophet. And that does not make us bad. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Zuyina lin nasi hubbu shahawat. That what he has made beautiful or what he has beautified in human beings are the things which they covet. Allah has made women, horses, children, wealth, hordes of gold and silver, beautiful to us. These are the things in which we chase after in this dunya, in this world. We chase after relationships, having children, gathering not just gold and silver, but hordes of gold and silver, horses and cattle and well-tilled lands. These are the, the, the things that can be gained in this life. So it is within each and every one of us to desire and to covet these things. The hadith continues that before the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ responded and gave his answer, 
the angel Jibreel interrupted him and told him, Tawadi' li Rabbik ya Muhammad. Show humility in front of your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is as if Jibreel knew what his knee-jerk reaction would be, what his initial response would be, because it's within all of us. Let me be a king and a prophet. But Jibreel, before he answered, told him, be humble and show humility before your Lord. And after hearing the advice of Jibreel alayhi salam, the prophet, he said, Bal abdan rasulan. I will be a servant and a messenger. This choice that the Prophet ﷺ made for himself was not only for himself, but it was for the Ummah. Because he is the example that we are teaching everyone to follow, including ourselves. And if the Prophet chose kingship over servitude, then indeed we would be within our rights to pursue kingship by any means necessary. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا And certainly in the Messenger of Allah is the excellent example for us. So the Prophet, he chose to be a servant and a messenger. And indeed, each and every one of us should take this choice for ourselves in what we are able to. None of us will be able to be messengers. The door of prophethood is closed. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Prophethood is gone forever, but what remains are the true dreams. So what can we get from what he chose? Each and every one of us can choose to be servants. We can choose to serve others. We can choose to be in the service of others. And as the doctor mentioned in his speech when he was encouraging that he is sacrificing his time and he is not getting paid and he does not want to be paid, but he's encouraging the community as well to come and to volunteer, to do what you can, to be a servant, to serve the community, to serve your children. Even if they are not your children, be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for indeed there is greater reward in servitude. An individual may think to themselves, why can't I serve as a king? Why couldn't I choose being a king and a prophet? Surely a king can serve. But the truth is, when we think about kings and queens, they are not people who serve, rather they are the ones whom are served. So we understand this by nature, that it is not in the nature of a king to serve, that the kings are served. So this is why it is best for us to choose servitude, to be servants of Allah, to be servants of each other, to be servants for the community, for indeed there is much good in it. We find that when it comes to wealth, there is an inherent danger in it. That wealth in and of itself should not be coveted, should not be chased, and should not be gathered in huge, huge sums. The Prophet wasallam. He said in an authentic narration, O oh, children of Adam, it is best that you give from the surplus of your money, and it is evil if you keep it. But as for what is necessary for living, there is no harm in holding on to it. There is evil in holding on to the extra. There is harm that can be acquired by holding on to the extra. And that leads us to Another story of a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who one day received a huge amount of wealth. And when he received this huge amount of wealth in gold coins, he gathered his family together and he said that the tests has arrived. If you and I were to be told that we would gain a huge sum of money or wealth, we would gather our family to celebrate. But we see the companion of the Prophet وسلم, seeing a huge sum of money and becoming worried that Allah is about to test us, that the trials are about to come through this wealth. So what did he do? He placed a garment over the wealth and then he ordered his son to go out and to gather the poor. And he had them come to his door and everyone who came in, he would put his hand under the garment and take from the wealth and give it to them. And he would continue to do this and continue to do this until all the money had went away. And then he said, Alhamdulillah, we passed the test. Subhanallah. Who are these people? 
Who are these people? We passed the test. Why do you think he covered the money? Why do you think he put a garment over the money? Because he's a human being and he knows his nafs and he knows himself. If he begins to see the money decrease, 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 he will think about his children. He'll think about his home. He'll think about his relatives. He'll think about his wife. He'll think about all of the reasons why he shouldn't give the money. And so to fight against his own nafs, he had to cover the wealth so that he would be able to give for the sake of Allah and to follow his intention through. So again, this teaches us that we have moments in our lives in which we are able to give, we should give. And if we have moments in our lives where we fear poverty, we shouldn't fear poverty. Because all of the rizq and all of the provisions is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no human being who will pass away in this earth except that they will get every dollar that Allah had written for them to get except that they will eat every grain of rice that Allah had ordered and has decreed that you will eat, except that you will drink every drop of water that Allah had already decreed for you and that you will take that last breath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you. So what is it that we are truly fearing? It is the shaitan that is deceiving all of us. When we look at the entomology of words, meaning the roots of where words come from, just another proof and another evidence that hoarding wealth and hoarding money in within in itself is a danger. You find that there were two forms of currency in the Arabian Peninsula in the 6th and 7th and 5th centuries. And these two forms of money was based on gold and silver. It was the dinar and the dirham. These are the only two forms of currency in Arabia at that time. But where did they get this word dinar and dirham? And where does it derive from? And what can we learn by understanding the roots of these words? The gold coin is called the dinar. And if we look at the root of this word, we find that it is derived from the word nar, fire. Subhanallah, fire. So the abundance of gold is an abundance of what in our life? Fire. When we look at the silver coin, it is the dirham. And what is the root of the word dirham? It is the Arabic word ham, which means worry, grief, stress. So the abundance of gold and the abundance of silver will only bring what into our lives? Stress, worry, grief, and fire. And this is why even here in the West, we have a saying, and I will begin it and I'm sure that at least the youth will be able to finish it, but I'm sure all of the adults have heard it. They say more money, more problems. SubhanAllah, we all know. We all know more money, more problems. We all know this is not nothing new. So what is the solution? The solution is that we spend this money and that we give this money for the cause and for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already promised that whosoever spends in his path, Allah will double it and will triple it for you. And as the Imam, he said, he said that whosoever spends and whosoever gives will find it with Allah, not in the same way, not in the same exact way, but Allah will multiply it for you tremendously. Whatever it is that you give. So I encourage everyone that they should give something tonight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because on the day of judgment, we know that Allah jalla wa ala, may he be glorified, will bring down the mizan. And this is the scale in which we are all very familiar with. And there will come a day where we will be standing in front of Allah alone. No family, no friends, no helpers. Not only will you be standing in front of Allah, you will be standing completely naked in front of your Lord. There is no clothing to hide behind. There is only you and your deeds. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that scale down, not only will our deeds be counted on that day, but our deeds will be weighed on that day. Why are the deeds counted? They are counted because as much as we are called, we may respond multiple times to goodness. And so it should be counted, but why are they weighed? The deeds are weighed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our sincerity in that moment. 
Allah knows our sincerity in that moment. That as we were sitting here, perhaps tonight, thinking about what we would contribute before we leave, that the whole entire time, for the last four hours, we have been going back in our minds. I should give a thousand. No, maybe only two hundred. No, let me give twelve hundred. Wait, no, maybe three hundred. Wait, maybe I, two thousand. No, just five hundred. The entire time we are in here, we're going back and forth in our mind as to what we should give. But whatever number we arrive on, Barakallahu Fikum, may Allah bless you with it. Know that that jihad that you are battling in your mind, fighting against your nafs, fighting against your desire to give, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward of the highest number that you had intended, even if you were not able to put it and make the promise. Indeed, it is extremely important that we understand that the human being is an individual that needs spiritual cleansing. We need to be spiritually cleansed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many opportunities and ways in which we can become cleansed. We can become cleansed through wudu. We can become cleansed through fasting in the month of Ramadan. We can become cleansed and purified and be forgiven through the recitation of the Quran. But as well, we can become cleansed by giving fi sabilillah and giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every penny that we give is a form of purification for us. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages and has made it an obligation on us to give in zakat. And zakat, again, going back to the root of words, zakat means to purify. So the zakat that we give is not only a purification of our wealth, but is a purification of ourself and a purification of our soul. We are alive today and we are here, but in a hundred years, no matter how old your grandmother reached, even if she reached 120, in a hundred years, all of the adults today will not be here. There will be other people here. There will be other people in your homes. There will be other people on your property and they will be the owners of it. So SubhanAllah, what is it that we truly own? And what is it that we truly have? This is why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that those who have given or those who have, meaning your wealth, is only what you spend. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that your wealth is only what you spend. Because what you have in the bank, if you were to die on the way home, will be inherited. So you do not possess it, you do not own it. What you have under your mattress or what you have in your bookcase or wherever we hide our wealth, I won't go any further to inspire the youth and the children to snoop. But what we have stored wherever we have it, you do not own it. Because if you die, it is left behind. Do you know what you actually own? You only own the wealth and the moment you are giving it away. Because now you are using it. Because now you are spending it. This is something that cannot reach your ears. This is something that cannot reach your children. So ask yourselves, what is it that you own? And how can you exercise that? That even when it comes to the inheritance, that giving for the sake of Allah is extremely important. As we mentioned from the Shaykh that he mentioned that even in his last days, he was giving and he was spending fi sabilillah and spending for the sake of the masjid. We see here that death or knowing that we are about to die opens our eyes to the reality of things. Each and every day as we walk around, we are busy and we are deceived by the world. But death, even though it is a moment in which we close our eyes eternally until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us up on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, death is also an eye opener for us. It is the moment in which we understand the true value of things and the true meanings of things. It is a moment in which brings out the best within us. And so you find that individuals, when they know that they are transitioning, when they know that they are moving on to the next life, you find that they are very easy to give, very easy to spend, very easy to pay and to be charitable. Why? Because they want to make sure that they have done enough in this life because there is no do-overs and there is no coming back. The angel Jibreel 
he would not only come to teach the Prophet وسلم, the Quran, but he would come from time to time to give him advice, as in the hadith that I opened. But there is another hadith that I want to close with. And this is the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, in which the Prophet, he said that the angel Jibreel came to me and he offered me five pieces of advice. And I will only share two of them with you. Not because I do not know the other three, but because I want to stir your curiosity and I want you to go home and I want you to search and I want you to begin to look and to seek and to understand. The angel Jibreel, he said, Ya Muhammad, Ish ma shitta fa innaka mayyitun. Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, live however you want to live, one day you're going to die. Subhanallah. And this is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, the most beloved, the rahmatul lil alameen, the mercy for all of the creation, not just mankind, a mercy to all of the creation. And the angel Jibril is talking to him in this fashion, giving him a reality check. Live however you want to live, one day you're going to die. The angel Jibreel, he continued and he said, Wahbib man shitta fa innaka mufariquhu. And love whoever you want to love. One day you will be separated from the one you love. We love our children. We love our spouses. We love our partners. But one day we will be separated from them. No matter how much we love them, one day you will be separated from them. So what is the purpose of this advice? Many benefits. But from among the things in which we can derive as it relates to tonight and to this topic is the importance of spending. We should spend because one day we're going to die, we're not going to take it with us. But we should not allow the people whom we love to prevent us from spending. Because those same people that we love, we'll be separated from one day, no matter how much you love them. No matter how much you love them or they love you, you'll be separated from them one day and you will be in your grave, and the only thing that will accompany you is your deeds. So what is it that you should love more? The people around you, or should you love your deeds more? Because when they go to bury you, and they wrap you in the coffin, and they lower you, your children, they will cry, and you will hear them cry. And you will hear them say things. And you will hear them pray for you and ask for your forgiveness. But do you know what else you will hear? You will hear them leave. You will hear their footsteps leave. The Prophet Sallallahu he said that the one in the grave is able to hear the footsteps of the people as they're leaving the grave, leaving the cemetery, leaving the qabr. But what will not leave us are our deeds. So SubhanAllah, we should be striving each and every day that Allah has given us an opportunity to be on top of the soil, to do the good deeds. And this night is an opportunity to do that. I really and truly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of you because we know that fundraising and the flyers that are promoting fundraising, only the strong come out to these events. Everyone avoids these types of events and gatherings because we are stingy within ourselves and it's a human quality and trait. But for us to come out, no matter how late we came, we still came, shows bravery, shows character. It shows goodness, it shows generosity, and it shows goodwill. Because there are many individuals who's going to see the Imam after and give him all the excuses in the world as to why they couldn't make it tonight. Many, many, many. But alhamdulillah, we're here. So let's make the most of it. And let's give, and indeed, when we give, in that moment, we may feel that hurt. In that moment, we may feel that loss. But truly, when we go home and we lay our heads on our bed, we are truly going to be proud of ourselves and be content and be satisfied that at least on this day, we were victorious. That we were able to fight against not only the waswas of the shaytan and his whispers, but the waswas of our nafs, of our own self. That soul that orders us to do evil, that nafsul amara, that soul that orders you to be stingy, that soul that orders you not to give. We were able to conquer it and to defeat it today. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not belittle the good that any of us does. Even though we may follow it with sins, even though we may follow it with deeds that are not praiseworthy, these days and these moments of giving and being charitable are worth everything. And subhanAllah, I said I would close with that hadith, but another hadith came to mind. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, no, no, when we look at the Prophet sallallahu we find a beautiful incident connected to Uthman ibn Affan. And we know Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, 
He was extremely wealthy, he was extremely rich. He was a billionaire to their standards. It is mentioned that when the Prophet was trying to gather and raise funds for one of the battles, the battles of Tabuk, and the same day that he was raising the funds was the same day that the caravan of Uthman came from Syria. When that caravan came, loaded 300 camels of goods, all of it his, it is said that the Prophet, he asked, who will give a goodly loan to Allah? Who will spend for the sake of Allah? And Uthman, he said, I will donate a hundred of these camels, fully loaded. They just came from Syria, I donate 100 of them. The Prophet Sallallahu he prayed for him. And then the Prophet asked again, who else will give? Who will spend for the sake of Allah? And so Uthman, he raised to the occasion again and said, I will give another hundred camels from my 300 camels, fully loaded. They just came from Asham. I will give it for the sake of Allah. And the Prophet, he made prayer for him. And then the Prophet asked again, who will give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Uthman again on the third occasion gave a hundred camels. The 300 camels that came from Asham, he gave all of it for the sake of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu he said, O oh Uthman, no sin will hurt you after this day. SubhanAllah, look at the reward that Uthman ibn Affan acquired and the protection that he acquired from what? From spending for the sake of Allah, not just from standing in the night and praying, even though he would stand in the night and he would pray, and not from fasting even though he would fast. Look at the tremendous reward that we can gain just by spending for the sake of Allah. And another point within that hadith that we must mention, you find that there are narrations where companions would come to the Prophet, like a companion, he came to Muhammad and he gave a golden egg that he had. It wasn't an egg, but it was the shape of an egg. And the Prophet said, what do you have left? He said, I have nothing left. The Prophet said, take it home and spend it on yourself and your family. But then we have other hadith, like this one of Uthman ibn Affan giving all of his wealth and the Prophet taking it. Or Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he was asked, he gave all of his wealth. And when the Prophet asked, what do you leave behind? He said, I left them Allah and his messenger. And the Prophet would take it. Why would the Prophet take from them and not from the other companion? Because the Prophet wasallam he knows and he sees the character and the build and the tawakkul and the trust that made the companions different. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhuma, they have true tawakkul and reliance. When they give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond, will give them back, will double it, will triple it, will quadruple it. They are go-getters. They don't just sit, they move, they work, they invest and they give. But others, if they give, then that is the only thing that they will have. They are not on the level of Abu Bakr. They are not on the level of Uthman. So as you give tonight, give with that spirit. Give with that spirit that as you are giving, you know full well that Allah will return it to you and you will find that Allah will double it. But if you give with fear that Allah may not give it back, that you've lost it, you only gave it to save your face, then indeed you're going to find that to be the case. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ana dhanni abdi bi, that I am as my slave thinks of me. And I'm with him or her when they call upon me. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering. I really encourage each and every one of us to give and to pledge and to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that we have the food that is ready but we are not going to share that out unless we're able to get a little bit of the donations. So inshallah, the quicker that we, serve the do we get the donations is the quicker that we'll be able to eat and the quicker that we'll be able to go home. So inshallah, we'll have the kids block the door. So before I take a seat, I just want to ask, is there anyone who's able to give $1,000 to the masjid or pledge $1,000? That does not mean that you have the thousand right now or maybe you do. But pledging the thousand dollars means that you are a person of your word and that you will give it within the year. I mean, closer within the month or two months. But inshallah, you will give it. Is there anyone who is able to give a thousand dollars? Yourself, is there any two people who could come together or a friend that you always encourage to do the goodness and you know that she'll back you up or he'll back you up and you will say, I'll just pledge one thousand. And you'll call that person later. I do it all the time with my mother. I pledge and then I write her, 
I, I made a pledge. You said, sell me $300. My mother's in the audience right there. I always put her on the spot and, uh, you know, put her on the spot. So you guys have mothers too? Inshallah. You guys have friends? I know if I open your phone, there's over 700 contacts. I know that for sure. And I know that if I open your Facebook, you have like 7,000 friends. So what can we do here tonight? Is there anyone that could give a thousand? Two people or three people that can come together? We have one brother here. Barakallahu feek. We have one brother here. Barakallahu feek. One brother. He said he would give. Uh, I don't know the brother's name. Inshallah. What's your name again? Oh, mashallah. Inshallah. So. Uh, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to accept it from you. Oh, we have two brothers here. Okay, inshallah. So two brothers. Takbir. Barakallahu feek. May Allah reward you. We have three brothers. Three brothers over here who said they would give it. Subhanallah. And I just want to say. The first brother that said he would give the thousand, Wallahi, you're such a door of goodness. Your courage has a ripple effect. Your courage has a ripple effect, subhanAllah. This is why every gathering, when you're asked, you should always be the first to shoot your hand because you will get the reward of the people who come after you, right? Being that goodness, subhanAllah. So we have three brothers. Are there any from the sisters who want to compete? And don't worry, you can use your husband's money and you can deal with him later. Is there any sisters, two sisters who want to come together and not let the brothers just take it away? Ikfa Institute Al Madina Travel Salum Jida Send Info International Actori Hatijania in America Si Njital Sunyu Imam Muhammad Muntaha Saho Nyolin Dimai Emission Bumak Bidi Sandine